What up, G? What's good, my dog? It's so good to hear your voice, man. Man, it's been forever. Yo, man. Likewise. Appreciate you coming and joining us today. Yes, sir. I appreciate you for having me on this platform with you, bro. I'm, I'm excited to be involved in everything you got going on. Oh, that's love, G. Well, I'm going I'm to I'm do the intro and we can jump right into it. All right. Let's bet. So I'd like to welcome everyone to the 18th episode of Money Trees. I am your host, Khufu. Today I'm joined by a talented creator, musician, and one of the most fired drummers I know. Let's welcome Walter Boston III to the show. Hey. <laughs> what up, Walt? <laughs> Yo, man, I, I know I need the sound effects. They're coming. They're on the way. I'm sorry I do not have them yet. I've been saying that, but they really are on the way. <laughs> all you need is a good applause bro that's it. yo that's been my issue is like i keep tripping over the particular sound effects like what's gonna be i need like a solid eight that i go through and you know i'm out here listening to like oh well this applause has a little too much low end in it i'm out here trying to eq my applauses and it's, it's, it's been a lot it's been a lot <laughs> but uh um, that's a fact no, I, I mean i know i know you understand it as a producer picking those sounds can Sometimes take longer than making the damn record. Yeah, 100%. So, um, yo, G, we haven't talked in a minute. What are you currently cooking up, man? What's got your creative attention? Yo, so, yeah, it really has been a long time. You know it's crazy, bro? We go as far back as when you were going crazy talking to me about 3D printers and how they were. you were dead set on how 3D printing was the thing. And fast forward now, here we are, bro. And that was so, that was probably like, that was probably like 2013, 2014, bro. So fast forward to now, you know what I mean? Like, bro. So fast forward to now, um, we went from just talking about music to now I I have a space here in in Charlotte called Vent Room that I own with my business partner, uh, Jalen Sansoy. And uh, so that has been on the business end at the forefront of of what my focus has been outside of just my own artistry is helping other people in the city and people who come to the city have a, a dope place to record while they're in Charlotte, in the Queen City, since we're right outside of town. Uh, as far as my artistry, man, I'm I'm working on, I got about three or four projects that I'm dropping this year. Um, I'm going to be starting a series called the Trifecta series. So it's going to be my way of, of experimenting with three song projects. And I'm going to do three of those this year and they'll all be called the Trifecta tips. Um, so I definitely look forward to everybody hearing that. That'll, the first one will be dropping in a few weeks, actually. Fire G. So that's, that's all what money trees is about is getting on here and just us being able to kind of document where we're at both personally and creatively. So it's dope hearing you talk about the Trifecta series. It's fire hearing you talk about Vent Room. Oh man, I have to make a note. 3D printing is still my, like I'm still crazy into it. The technology just isn't where I would like it to be at yet. And so in the meantime, well, I think I think it's a good point that you bring that up because I'm always looking at like where technology is heading. And so Web3 caught my attention because this tech and what's happening with blockchain and NFTs is a bit further along than where I think 3D printing is gonna be at in maybe 10, 15 years. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised if we're if we're chopping up on the 3D printing game <laughs> in the 2030s. But True. I digress. Speaking web three. How familiar are you with the space, with NFTs, with blockchain, cryptocurrency, any of it? So I am, I'd say on the scale of the iceberg, I'm like just below the surface, but I haven't technically explored the depths of the deep end yet. I just, but I know, and I'm aware of what is there, if that makes sense. So I know- It definitely makes sense. Yeah, so like I'm very familiar with blockchain. I'm very familiar with with stuff with all of that stuff and how it works. Um, just the other day, I finally was able to get up to speed on how people are actually able to price NFTs and where all of that stuff actually comes from and the perceived value of everything. So um, that's about as far as I go. I don't know really any technical, most technical terms. I feel like, but I can navigate through the combo for sure. 
So, yeah. so are you getting any questions at the studio from artists about the space or is it still like something that kind of people bring up in passing, but there's no real attention on it? There is, um, there is some conversation being had with people just trying to understand exactly, you know, what's going on, what it is and why certain artists are pushing it so hard. Or as you know, like we can see most of, most of the major artists, especially in the hip hop, um, realm are buying, you know, the NFTs and putting them as their uh, as their profile pictures. So with that happening, it does generate conversation amongst people in the lab. So yeah, people have been bringing it up, but I don't think people truly understand it yet, or I don't know if they feel like maybe they have enough leverage for it to mean anything for them. So it kind of ends up being a passing um, conversation, if you will. No, I, I get that for sure. Because you see a little baby or a gonna buy these bored apes, and then you see the price point on it, and it just becomes a little, a little bit more like a little bit. It becomes a little less than a dream. It becomes why am I? Why can I not speak right now? <laughs> it becomes <laughs> a little less than a dream because it's like, yeah, why would you ever spend three hundred k on this profile picture, especially when the benefits seem mysterious and or fake. And so I get that. I think it's interesting for so many reasons. And part of the reason when I was thinking about, okay, you know, what would me and Walt be able to catch up on? I wanted to hear about what you had going on because I think that as an instrumentalist, as a drummer, as a producer, there's a lot of cool use cases. But before we touch on those, I want to propose a, a different way to think about NFTs in regards to vent room, right? Okay. So when you when you set up sessions, um, you have you know your word of mouth and people can hit you up, but you also have your online booking area, and people can go and schedule very different types of sessions. You know, you guys are very thoughtful in your approach, where you understand that sessions are not a one size fit all, and it's also not just oh here's an engineer. It's like no, do you need visuals attached with this? Um, are you going for a certain vibe? You know, are there going to be other services that you need provided with your session? And you guys are really thoughtful with your pricing and your packaging. And I think that that is fire. I love to have that with studios where it's not just, oh, okay, here I booked it for an hour. Here's an engineer or not. I can actually choose like, oh, you guys have videographers available? Fire. Oh, there's food service available? Fire. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if we think about what, what, what you really have it with the vent room space. So anyone not familiar with the Charlotte music scene? There aren't many studios. It's not a very um, music-focused city. And so spaces like Vent Room are rare but very needed because there are tons of talented artists in that space. And so when somebody comes into the Vent Room space and you know they, you guys offer memberships, which I think is also fire, they don't really have the ability to kind of flex that membership. And that's something that not even necessarily NFTs, but just blockchain tech can allow you to do. I think taking the term NFT out of it can help a lot because people will hear that and there's already so many stigmas around it. You don't have to try to force someone to see it. You can just show them why it's valuable. So when I would go on to the vent room space and I'm looking at potentially like an artist membership, instead of me just getting a receipt, I could purchase it and then you know there could be another interaction layer where maybe it's some type of producer graphic or like a coin with your logo on it. And then what you say is like, yo, whenever pe these people that have the membership come to the studio to check in, you just do a little QR scanner. And so they come and check in with their vent room pass on their phones. And it doesn't have to be something that's priced crazy. You can do it at the exact same format that you currently have, but you just add another layer there for all the people. And then it's like, oh, yo, this is dope. Like, look at this graphic I have on my phone. When I come to the studio, they just scan my phone and that's how they check it. All the billing, all the extras, all of that is done right here with my membership. You start having like your own, it's almost like having like your own Amex, right? But for the studio. And so those are some of the really interesting use cases that I think outside of profile pictures, I want to make sure you and your team are aware of not even going to hold you that 
would be everything, bro. And it's funny because we had been talking about how we how we wanted to eventually uh, just have everything moving forward with the use of a QR code. And so the fact that you're presenting it in this way, it, it would just it would honestly revitalize our whole situation and it would make it so much doper for people to come in and just have their phone scanned and everything is there. That's kind of, that's pretty genius, bro. I'm not going to lie. Yo, man. And that, I think, you know, a lot of that storytelling, a lot of that's presentation where just that extra layer of like, Oh, okay. The way that I book is X, Y, and Z, or it's just like, yo, you could say, listen, we're going to change up the model a little bit and say you buy one of these passes and that grants you X amount of hours at the studio. And then it becomes a thing of like, yo, use it. Maybe it rolls over. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows? But you can start exploring these different kind of um, systems that aren't really feasible right now because it's cool to have a membership, but nobody is going to really want to post a receipt saying that you know you just charge their card a few hundred dollars that's not as interesting as like yo there's a custom graphic that i get with vent room and then anytime you know you can load it into somebody's mobile pass on their phone and so now when they go to use their apple pay they could have their vent room pass right there similar to the way you see american airlines or delta or any of the other flights when you get your boarding pass right on your phone it's little touch points like that that start to make it more interesting more appealing and then all of a sudden yo maybe it's even a little bit more exclusive where it's like now nah, you can only book sessions here at this price or if you own one of our you know passes the sessions are crazy discounted in comparison and you start fostering a community where it becomes like a flex to be a part of it and you know these are just different angles, different presentation um, pieces, but it's fire to start thinking about like, oh, okay, how can we flip this? How can we make this experience different? Another thing I want to put you, oh, my fault, you want to say something? Man, I was really just going to say the fact that you are saying all this is honestly, and I know that Jalen is here too, it's definitely, uh, can't even lie to you, it's leveling up the way that he and I are trying to attack, attack the business in the playing field that we're working in because there are not many studios who are willing to go the extra mile in order to do these things. And trust me when I say I'm taking notes on everything you're saying right now, because I want to be able to implement these things, uh, especially when it comes to the custom graphic and being able to load things into the mobile wallet, bro. Like that would literally exponentially help us because at the end of the day, the goal is to be on people's phones. And you know that. So, yeah. So, you know, so yeah, bro, I, I agree with you 100%. I want to I wanna add another layer that I think could be kind of crazy. When we think about mobile shopping experiences, right, everyone's like e-commerce, we can say, is pretty much the same. It's the, and when I say that, it's like the presentation, it's 2D, it's flat. You just have the item that you're buying, a title, and a description of it. And it's been like that, you know, for the past two decades at least, where it's like, you know, Walmart or Supreme or Gucci, their websites are really only so different. So there's a few different places. I've been working with the Muse team a lot, but there's other VR spaces to start thinking about just, again, those experience layers, right? And things that you can spend some time doing that you don't have to, it doesn't require a lot of upkeep. But once it's built, it becomes another really cool feature. So you guys can actually use a LiDAR scanner and you can scan the rooms of your studio and then you can upload the, your studio space into a VR space and allow people to either browse the studio virtually. And so for the people that have Oculus Quest and things like that, they can literally be in the vent room space and it wouldn't cost you anything to set this up. It's available right online. It works on mobile, works on VR, works on desktop. The app is free to scan it. And you can actually let people purchase services. Like let's say, you know, it's A room versus B room. They can walk into the A room and then book uh, you know, two hours or book however many hours in there or walk into the B room or you could make like a listening room where you just have music playing from artists that went to that space. And then for the artist, it becomes like, oh shit, this is fire. I get to come to the studio. They have this little extra layer here, but damn, and they're going to promote my music here in this collection. 
and it doesn't have to be a thing of oh your entire site is run through this but you spend a day kind of customizing it and a couple hours not even if it's a couple hours a week it's probably really like an hour or so a week on upkeep and now that's just another layer when people go to your site it's like yo browse the studio and instead of you you know you can have the pictures but every studio has pictures how many studios can you actually go in and forget a 3d tour it's interactive and you know you can have albums and purchase links and you can build just these other types of experiences and so yeah, gee, it's it, there's a lot of exciting kind of layers that I think as a studio owner, you can start thinking about like, okay, how do we how do we advance as this new technology is coming about, and what are going to be some of these opportunities? Um, yeah, yeah, I wanted to add that other piece in, bro. Okay, you just kind of set me off with that because this is giving me. I don't know if you've ever seen when T Grizzly goes when he streams on twitch or whatever when he's playing grand theft auto and people be in his studio that he created up there and they be rapping for real in the the studio yeah yep (laughs) and it's like bruh like i when i was watching that i was like there's gotta be a way we can do this uh because when it comes to the metaverse i was even telling my girl i've been on her top about this about getting her a store putting her her uh, clothing store in metaverse so that people can walk through there and essentially really buy her clothes in the metaverse and being able to have the studio set up the same way bro it would change the game because like you said it made people feel like they're already there they can literally purchase stuff you know to digitally place things on you know uh on the say we place an album sitting in front of the speaker you click on it and to be able to buy it you know that that would be awesome so I don't know. You got my brain spinning right now, bro. I can't. <laughs> that's, you said that's, that, what is that yeah. app called? You said it's called LiDAR Scanner? Yeah, I'll send you the, I'll send you these offline. So the virtual world builder that I'm talking about is Muse, M-U-S-E. Uh, those, are, those are my guys. I love what they're doing there. But there's also other alternatives. Um, okay. Muse is free to use, and they have tons of features, great support. And just because of the relationship, I work with them, but it may not be the exact one that you want for the studio. Like it may work better for the fashion or whatever it is, but just starting to think about like, yo, this VR space. And I tell everyone, it's not about going completely into the metaverse or going completely into web three. It's just saying, okay, there's new tools that I have to promote a lot of the things that I'm doing. How can I incorporate these new tools into my world? You don't start ignoring the other things or you know, forgetting about them because there's going to be people that may not give a damn about your metaverse version of the studio. And that's fine too. It's like we'll still have all of these other offerings for you. But for the people that do care about it and for the, like the way you said it, this conversation is getting your mind turning about different creative ways to approach it. And you know how important it is. Like Even if you just got one new membership into the studio a day, that would be insane. You're adding 30 members a month. That's going to start to build up. And then you start having this closed off community. And we know how artist communities work in cities. If Charlotte could ever start looking even a, a fraction of the way Atlanta does with the camaraderie and the sound, having one of the premier studios in that city, whew, it becomes crazy. So there's like short term, long term value. It's creatively fun. It's not really cost ineffective. Like, that's one thing too is that a lot of people see certain blockchains like Ethereum that have a high cost barrier, but there's tons of other options. Um, and there's tons of other platforms that are building like really good on ramps, ways for people just to use credit cards. So so yeah, G, I I knew that a lot of this stuff would be interesting for you. And then when I just would think was thinking about what it is that you do, my mind got turning, like, oh, okay, like let me make sure Walt knows about this. They make sure he knows about this and not because you have to go do those things, but you may hear these things I'm talking about here, and go down a rabbit hole and find something completely else, uh, something completely different. That's fire, but that's still in the same world. Yes, bro. And that's, that's what I'm all about is what they say, like bridging the gap, bro. Like it really is bringing the two worlds together, music and technology. And especially when it comes to a studio, a, a collaborative space, being introduced and pushed to the forefront in a new 
interactive way with this virtual reality stuff that's actually like starting to catch wind now, which I'm happy about because, I mean, I feel like people have been playing with playing around with the whole idea of virtual reality for so long. Like, and so for now, for it to actually be something that can be capitalized upon and, and something that can actually be turned into something of meaning and can be personalized for each person or business who uses it. The it's kind of limitless as to what we can do with it right now. I don't know. You really got me interested in this scanner, bro. I cannot stop. <laughs> <laughs> the scanner is ill, man. And th it's free. And so yeah. that's the thing. I think there's a paid version of it, but you can do a lot of it with the free version or like a lot of what you need with the free version. And to me, there's so much exciting shit happening around this tech that the number one like mission I can have is to put people on to the other dope things that can happen. Because I think the profile picture stuff is fire. I think that, you know, there's a lot of cool social club things happening here digitally, but like, yo, verifiable digital ownership, what that means, what we can start setting up, things that we can start creating. Uh, even with even with this show, right? The reason why I have my artists create um, custom notes for everyone one it's a really dope celebration of the the show and the appearance but two it becomes a way to create like an actual asset around your appearance and so when you start doing more fire things and your name gets even bigger and more well known than it is and people look back and say yo i remember when walt talked about the trifecta series i remember when he first mentioned where they were at with vent room wow now he's doing this oh yeah i would love to have that collectible i would love to have um you know own a piece of that moment in time and that creates value for people and it may be not valuable to anyone else except for that person but with this technology, we're able to, you know, allow them to support it in that way if they choose to. And things like that start becoming really, really interesting. Another really fire piece I want to uh, kind of get your mind thinking on is you as a producer and as a drummer, right? And I know you know the headache we go through dealing with splits in the studio. And especially when splits start, you know, when songs start touching multiple hands, because you can have splits set up in one room and then a bunch of other people get involved after that room's gone on. And all of a sudden your splits start looking real funky and different than what was agreed upon. What's fire about blockchain is being able to have metadata that is immutable. And what that means is like, yo, you know, you can essentially sign your split sheets on the blockchain and allow these stems to travel and do their piece, but the original splits will still be viable. And then if the splits need to change, then, you know, there's ways to communicate that or find out who owns whatever piece and then have those conversations. But it becomes a way to uh, protect yourself, which I think is also fire. Now, of course, this is not fully fleshed out now amongst any of the platforms, but the potential is there for that for us to have this on-chain metadata that doesn't change hands. And so when a record is created and people agree upon whatever, or you upload a drum kit that you recorded and some samples and you say, yo, this is me, I recorded this then, it's timestamped, it's on that blockchain, and your ownership, it becomes a lot easier to prove that ownership, which I think is that, like this is going to be a really fire change that happens for the music industry with being able to track metadata in splits. Bro, most definitely. That would that would eliminate a lot of uh, confusion amongst people when it comes to just having it in an old school type form or having to go and dig through credits and stuff like that or, you know, just having to ask somebody about any information, whether it's their BMI or whatever. It's all alleviated by having it in this one place, like you're saying. And I could definitely see how that would work i do think it would become it would become interesting um as songs become bigger you know in that space and the perceived value that um a person's part in a song could have you know or i guess because necessarily i mean would would the place that you hold you know would it uh 
would it maintain the same value or grow over time like the split itself? You know. Well, the split itself should not change value unless like everyone agrees to it, right? So let's say that, you know, we make a song and you feel that I'm entitled to 25% of it, but I come up with the hook, but you do everything else. And then the hook becomes the most popular part of the song. It just, you know, unfortunately, based off my contribution to it, we didn't know at the time the hook was going to be everyone's favorite piece. So I'm not going to be entitled to anything more than my additional 25%. But the good thing is at least my 25% will be tracked there. At least you won't be able to come back and say, oh, no, 25%. Nah, we said it was going to be this effect and blah, 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 blah. And Mm -hmm. that helps protect it. And I also like highlighting this isn't new. All of these things are currently possible. They're just not a part of... It's, it, it's like it's not easy. It's not simply done. And because it's not easy, because it's not simple, because there's not education around it, sessions happen every single day and nobody talks about splits. Nobody talks about splits after re- – like the record will come out and people still won't be sure on the splits. There just isn't a, a simple fix for it. And there's tons of reasons why. And I don't think that, oh, just because blockchain exists, it will fix that. But we have the opportunity to. And to me, that's the exciting thing. And I think that there are platforms that are making strides towards that right now. However, we've been talking a ton on some practical-ish. True. Uh, I, while, while I got you, uh, I kind of just wanted to like hear about you, – you mentioned, you mentioned your girl earlier. And oh, I, I want to hear what, what's that been like? What's it been like balancing being an artist, having a committed long-term relationship – and then also running a studio. To be honest with you, it's been very, very, very challenging, bro. <laughs> um, it definitely, we definitely have our highs, you know, but we definitely have our lows when we have our lows. And uh, it really just comes down to communication, bro, and understanding and us realizing, you know, we're working towards a common goal here. You know, as as my woman's man, I want to make sure that I'm working to provide us a lifestyle that both of us want to live. Um, but with that comes a lot of sacrifice, which in turn turns into a lot of communication and a lot of figuring out, you know, what's worth it and what's not and, you know, stuff like that. So it's a, a ever growing process every day. Um, thankfully, I have a woman who is just as busy or way busier than I am with her own stuff. So I don't necessarily have to uh, uh tackle the relationship in a way where I just have a woman sitting around waiting for me to give her the next thing to do. You know, it's more so her telling me, you know, maybe you should be doing this, maybe you should be doing that. So in that way, I'm very blessed um, in that area. And it takes a lot of stress off of me when it comes to the relationship. Uh, so, it, yeah, man, I mean, we've been together now in uh, about, not, we've been together nine years now. Uh, and... I'd say, if anything, it's helped me stay grounded, you know? I think that if I was, I think that me knowing me, if I was fully, uh, if I was fully single in my space, you know, things may go differently, but as of right now, I appreciate the foundation that my relationship gives me. It's very valuable to me in my life. Oh, that's, that's fire, G. Like, it's really ill hearing that you have that partnership and that support that way. And it's needed because I, I genuinely wondered. I'm like, yo, how does my man Walt balance it? Like that is that is work, but I'm glad that it's working out for you, and you're putting in that effort, putting in that time. You mentioned earlier that you had already kind of talked to her about putting you know her fashion uh, or her creating a fashion store in the metaverse and starting to get into that world. Would you say that you're a lot further into the space than she currently is? Yeah, most definitely, because I I can see it. You know what I'm saying? It's like you see when you you look in the sky and you're like, yo, y'all see that? And everybody's like, nah. You're like, but I see that shit. Like, it's right there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Right there. And like, I'm telling her, I'm like, yo, like, I can sit here and daydream in the car and I can, I could, if I put on the Oculus, I could just walk through your store. Like, how can you tell me that's not a fire idea? You know, like, 
for me to go in your office and see these clothes hanging up, I could see them in the metaverse as well. So I just really been trying to explain it to her, but not really say too, too much because I realize at a certain point, I don't even know what I'm talking about. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, I tried because I don't want it to get to a point where she's like, well, how do I do that? And I'm like, I don't know. And then it just kills the vibe. So it's, it's one of those things where I, having conversations with you and being around more people who are like-minded in that way to help me figure out how to do that for her, that would be hard. And anyone else who is into fashion, whether it's locally or, you know, I think that that's going to benefit a lot of people in that industry to have a walkthrough like that, the same way we want to do for the studio. Yo, absolutely, G. Man, first let me say, any question that you have, hit me. (laughs) For real. If you're like, I know this can't be done, but I don't know how, tap in with me and if i don't know how i'm sure we'll be able to figure out who we have to reach out to to make it a thing but the fact that you you hit it nail on the head for me you see it you can understand like yo this is going to be the thing you're not 100 percent sure of what it looks like or how to get there but you have that vision as long as you're putting in the time and exploring with it because nobody's figured it out yet and none of the platforms it's still still so early in this space and i keep saying i'm gonna stop saying that it's so early but we really are like extremely early the majority of people like there there are less people that own an nft than live in the borough of brooklyn so when you think about that type of scale it becomes like all right mass adoption is still on the horizon so we need to be exploring all the different possibilities i think that the Another piece that you hit on and why I want to make myself a resource to anyone that knows me is it's not easy to figure out even how to learn it, where people are interested in learning, but there's no starting point. There's no consistent messaging either, where it's like, yo, if you go Google any of these buzzwords, you'll end up reading you know, 10, 15 articles before you may even get the answer that you want. So that's something that I'm dedicating a lot of my time to. So if you personally or if anyone that you know has questions, needs help with that, tap in with me. Uh, I want to equip as many people as I can with this information. So I have way more creative minds than just my own thinking about all the wild shit that can happen in this space. Yeah, bro. I, I gotta say, you and I are about to be having a year long conversation, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we, That's we, what it's we, here for, oh, G. Yeah. That's that's what this is, man. Money trees. Like I want my friends to come on here. Let's talk. Let's see where you at. Let's plant some trees and let's nurture them. Let's see how these ideas grow and what we can make happen. Yes, man. Straight up, because I, I'm telling you, bro. I, I don't know exactly what the rest of this year is holding, but my goal is to end up on a tour of some sort. As far as drums, I'm not sure who I'm gonna be with yet, but it's very, very close to the horizon so i will keep you updated on that because as shit is moving and shaking like you said the value can't do anything but go up as far as i'm concerned and so i definitely want to stay locked in with you because as i move around different things can be implemented in wherever i am you know a different space can call for a different approach so yep i just i definitely want to keep keep it locked in with you in that regard bro Hell yeah, G. There's actually a bunch more for us to get to. So I want us to, <laughs> we, we, we got to schedule it offline. So me and you can chop and talk about a bit more of the specifics. I want to send you some resources and share that. But I also want to thank you for coming on today. This has been really, really fire catching back up with you, getting to explore some of these ideas. I'm glad you were receptive to them. Uh, you know, this is just my take on it. I want to get like mentioned. I want to give you those resources so you can just see some of the other examples that I've seen that have made me start thinking about you and your brand that way. And I know you'll have 10 times as many crazy ideas as the ones I've presented today. So that's really exciting. Yes, sir. I definitely will, man. You got, like, like Jay-Z said, man, you got me going. <laughs> so look man before before you get out of here i need two i need to ask you two questions the right. first question is what is your seed phrase so on money trees i tell people that your seed phrase the current like slang for it it means your recovery key and that's the 12 or 24 word 
passcode that you're given when you create a what is it non-custodial or a custodial no when you create a custodial wallet see this is why i gotta stay away from buzzwords because then i start messing up but when you create (laughs) your crypto wallet you're given this recovery key and I say calling it a seed phrase is not scary enough because if you lose your seed phrase, you lose access to all of your NFTs, your cryptocurrencies, everything is game over. Man. So here, right? Like <laughs> it needs to be something like DEFCON. You know what I mean? DEFCON sounds like, hey, yo, whoa, whoa, what's happening here? Um, <laughs> like there's something wrong. But seed phrase, we're repurposing it here to make it kind of the the quote that you live by or the quote that sums up your approach to your artistry, to your career, to the trees that we planted today. So if you had a seed phrase, what would it be? Bro, my seed phrase is uh, it's actually the five Ps. So proper preparation prevents poor performance. And I've been, um, I came across that phrase probably like five, four or five years ago. And I could just never let it go, bro. And I, for whatever reason, because, you know, we rap, we listen to music. So it's phrases all day long coming towards us. But that one, I've never been able to put down since I picked it up, man. So, yes, the five Ps, proper preparation prevents poor performance. I'll tell you what, I love that quote. And I agree with it. Anytime that I'm wondering why I did not get the results that I wanted, nine times out of ten, I can look and see where my preparation was lacking and where there were things that I, you know, missed or there were oversights or I did not put enough effort when I knew that I should have. And so, yeah, man, I I think the five P's is (laughs) very, very accurate. We pushed P. (laughs) Pushing P. (laughs) Yo, it's crazy how brands run with culture. There's so many fucking social media accounts I've seen using that P emoji lately. But I digress. The last... (laughs) Oh, no, what happened? That in itself is amazing. I'm like, yo, everybody pee now. Like, this is crazy. (laughs) It's really a thing, bro. Yo, man, we... Our our value as black entertainers is... It can't be measured. But... And not at all, bro. At all. We, we, I am going to ask you to measure the value of this one of one NFC that we're going to list for sale. This yep. Walt Money Trees number 18 note. Yes. What is the price going to be? Bro, so I had to do some research on this. I was like, I don't even know how I'm supposed to price an NFT. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what I did, I want to be smart about this and I want to, um, the reason. Yeah the reason I'm explaining the reason for my choice I'm about to give uh, my life has revolved around threes. So everything for me, I'm the third Walter Boston, the third, you know, I'm about to put out the trifecta tapes. So for me, I think to start off what I want to do and let this grow is I want to list it for 0.14 ETH. So that comes out to right now, currently, I believe that's $333 and 33 cents. There it is. I love it. Three, three, three. Walt, man, we got, we got, we got a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, Thank you for bro. coming on here. Uh, I'm gonna tap in with you. We'll immediately. I'm gonna send you over some of those resources so you can just start going there. And then, yeah, we just gotta stay in touch as this journey continues for both of us, and just see how we can keep building. Yes, sir. Especially now that the ball is rolling, we gotta, we gotta keep it going, bro. This is it, man. This is it. So um, I'm going to catch you, G. Yes, sir. I'll catch you. Thank y'all. Money trees, baby. (laughs) Hey, we out of here. Later. Peace, dog.